This video is sponsored by 1Password. Coming from an iPhone, I was pretty disappointed with the performance of the Exynos chip when the S22 Plus was launched here in the UK. But it's been six months now, so today I wanted to share with you if it's gotten any better over time by sharing five things I like and five things I still don't like about the S22 Plus. From battery to widgets and cameras to keyboards, there are things I love about the S22 Plus and Android in general, and there are some things I definitely do not like. Now, quick one before we start, we are about to start doing one giveaway per month to newsletter subscribers, so I'll leave a link down below for that if you want to win some cool free stuff. In at number five for things I like is the smaller size and the more rounded shape of the S22 Plus over the S22 Ultra. And as we all know, the Ultra is basically just a note, and the S22 Plus is somewhere between last year's Ultra and this year's, well, S22 Plus. Now the result is a phone that's more comfortable to hold and one that you can mostly use one-handed, though it's still a bit of a stretch to reach the top with a, you know, a slight chance of dropping it. The positioning of the buttons, the fingerprint sensor, the speaker placement, all of this just feels like a very, very refined, like well-built phone. And I like the shape of the camera bump as well on the back with the lenses embedded into a single camera bump rather than the iPhone and it's like three separate camera lenses. Now comparing this to the iPhone 13 Pro, it's obviously a bigger phone, but if you're comparing this to the S22 Ultra, then this is definitely, at least to me, a more comfortable phone to kind of hold in terms of like fit and feel. And of course, you also lose the S Pen, which I know is a very Marmite accessory for some. Okay, so in at number four, iMessage. It just isn't a problem. But like, yes, it's taken time to move away from like, iMessage and transition my conversations away from blue bubbles, but it's gotten to the stage where I don't even have Android messages on the home screen anymore. Like who uses default text apps anymore anyway? All of my friends' conversations have moved over to other messaging platforms like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. And so the messages app is just left to be like clogged full of random codes when you're signing into like a million different online services. Oh, and Android does have a much better filter built into its block things like spam text messages and phone calls as well. Maybe the iPhone will catch up someday. Number three is, well, loosely related to the S22 as it's all about the Galaxy Watch 4. Now, over the last few weeks, this watch has detected and recorded way more workouts than the Apple Watch. And that's just because the way they function is fundamentally different. On the Galaxy Watch 4, if you start what it thinks is a workout, it will just automatically start tracking it for you. Over on the Apple Watch, the best it can do is prompt you to say, I think you've started a workout, but it only actually records the workout once you then tap the watch to say that you've started a workout. And who's got time for that? And who actually notices that when they're in the middle of doing something? And I'm sure this isn't much of a problem for most people, but here in the UK, I have a health insurance policy, which basically forces me to get off my butt and do 30 minutes of exercise every single day. And when I do, I get free access to perks like a free Apple Watch, 30% discount on Samsung devices, free cinema tickets, free Amazon Prime memberships, and just tons of other benefits. Now this means with the Apple Watch, you have to be very intentional. Like go to the gym, start a workout, do the workout, tap finish, and then grab my free stuff. On Android, I've actually found myself actually meeting those 30 minute targets through the Galaxy Watch just detecting when I'm like running around with the kids or splashing around at the pool or pacing around the house at 2am worrying if anyone's gonna like this video. Now if you want to learn more about Vitality, they are currently giving away £100 to every person that signs up. So if you're interested in getting free stuff or discounts or and free money, then check the link. I'll leave it down below. Now next up for things I like about the S22 in at number two is that you can interact with widgets. Now over in iPhone land, whilst I feel the widgets themselves feel more polished, there is literally nothing you can do with them other than tap them to then open the full app. Now this isn't the case on Android. Like firstly, I find there's a wider selection of widgets. Secondly, you can customize them like more due to Android's inherent ability to pretty much let you do anything on their phones. And with widgets like my Todoist app, for example, I can just check an item off once I've done it without jumping through like a thousand additional hoops like you do on the iPhone to open it and then check it off in the app itself, which leads me onto the number one thing that I like about the S22, customization. Now, as an iPhone user, we are still significantly limited to what we can do on our phones. And don't get me wrong, like this isn't always a bad thing. Having this walled and like meticulously maintained garden that Apple provides gives us like safety and quality and reliability that you don't always get on Android. But Android is this totally wide open ecosystem that you can explore and allows you to basically customize your phone in any way that completely suits your preferences and, and like needs. Change the home screen, the lock screen, add widgets, change the whole theme of the phone with different colors. You can replace every icon that you can see. You can even change what is essentially the operating system by changing the launcher, which allows you to really customize how your phone works. Now, over my years of playing like with Android, I've come to love 
the Nova launcher on all my devices. So with Nova, you can do some really cool things such as being able to swipe up or down on an app icon to trigger other actions like launching a totally different app, like starting the Google Assistant, searching, and just, just a whole ton more as well. Now, one of the biggest issues I had with the S22 and the S22 Ultra was performance with swiping up to search. Nova actually lets me fix that by configuring it to search when I swipe down, which is the same as how it works on an iPhone. So firstly, when I dual wield, you know, an iPhone and an Android phone, I'm not constantly confused myself by like swiping up on one and down on the other, and I just do get confused quite easily. But secondly, it means you can use other gestures to do certain actions on your phone too, like double tap and swipe up or down to launch an app that you otherwise maybe want hidden away, or lock your phone, or run a completely different shortcut for a certain app. Sky is basically your limit with Android, and you can choose like how much or how little you want to change, but either way, you'll be left with a pretty decent experience. Now, before we get on to the stuff I really don't like about the S22 Plus, I actually forgot to mention two more things that I like about this S22 Plus. Shock horror. Now, firstly, the always on display. It is so handy having this always on display to see like the time, the date, and your like latest notifications without needing to actually like touch or wake your phone. It means you can just glance over and know whether you want to actually pick up and react to whatever the latest like, notification is. So that's great. And I really, really do hope that this makes its way to the iPhone 14. Although I guess we'll have to, you know, maybe wait maybe till the 15 or 16 for the iPhone to catch up with a simple feature like that. Now, the second thing are these cases from Magback, which have made my transition to Android that little bit easier. Like this isn't a sponsored slot at all, but I just genuinely love these cases. They basically bring MagSafe to Android. So if you are switching from iPhone to Android and you have like some MagSafe accessories already, like I do with, you know, my chargers, then these cases have those super strong magnets in the back to let you like wirelessly stick and charge your phone on those same chargers. Now these chargers, these magnets also have another use as they're strong enough to let you stick your S22 Plus or your S22 to ultra to literally any metal surface. Now I use it all the time at the gym, sticking the phone to the gym equipment in front of me instead of having to reach down to the floor into my pocket or whatever I might put it. And I use it at home to stick it to the fridge and basically any other metal surface that makes it more convenient to use over putting it down, like holding onto the phone unnecessarily. So those are the good things, the great things, but what about the not so great things and the downright inexcusable letdowns from the S22? So we've got five more for you and then a little bit of a gift at the end for you. So stick around for that. So in at number five, for me on the not so goods, the battery. For me, it just doesn't last long enough. Now I'm probably not a typical phone user, but I have kids who like to wake up very early and I stay up late playing video games until like 1am every day, which I'm told is not a very healthy thing to do. But the S22 Plus will struggle to get through a full day on a single charge. I've just found myself needing to charge more, like where I'd normally get into my car and sometimes keep my phone in my pocket. Instead, I find myself always having to get it out and just using the wireless charger on my car, which actually is another bag back charger that just kind of sticks effortlessly in my car. Now, when I'm working at home or from my desk, I'll stick it to the wireless MagSafe charger I've got on my desk there. And I found that by doing this, I can comfortably, very comfortably get through a full day without any drama. But if you aren't near chargers throughout the day, then I think you're going to struggle. And I think maybe that might be a reason to go up to the S22 Ultra because the battery life on the Ultra is pretty good. And yes, that is after waiting for those first two weeks for the intelligent battery management to kick in. Now, I've seen it make a big difference with other phones like the S22 Ultra, and it still was an improvement on the S22 Plus, but not enough to get me through each day. Now, number four is something that does frustrate me, and I didn't have this issue with the S22 Ultra, but I'm finding the keyboard just not as accurate as it needs to be. Like, it's getting really, really frustrating to be tapping away only to find that I've completely mistyped words and sentences with my, my fat fingers. Or the Android autocorrect has just totally failed. And I don't actually have fat fingers, so that makes it even worse. Now, I don't get this problem on my iPhone. And I've not seen this for an issue for a while on like any other Android phone, weirdly not even the S22 Ultra. Now I eventually fixed this problem by setting or rather changing my keyboard to the G board, which is also what I use on the iPhone. And I find this a much better experience to type with on the, on the Android phones. Now, one thing I will say is that since switching over to Android, I've just kind of rediscovered my love for the swipe keyboard, which a few people I know and spoken to uh, that don't know about it. But using swiping to type generally lets me type faster and more accurately than when tapping with the keys I'm finding at the moment. Now, I also really miss the cursor that you can get on the iPhone. So you just hold down your finger on the space bar. And the Android version is nowhere, nowhere near as good as on the iPhone, where it literally turns your finger into a mouse that you can kind of point anywhere on the text to make edits. On the S22 and just Android in general, it just lets you scroll like letters back and forth, but not let you use it like a proper mouse 
like on the iPhone. Number three, and back to the watch again. And whilst there is a lot to like about the Galaxy Watch 4, like the auto-detective workouts, the ability to see your average heart rate, apps you can install on the watch directly, a nicer size and more comfortable fit that I feel, to me, it still feels very sluggish. Like there's a pretty big delay when raising my wrist to wake the watch up. And similarly, when raising my wrist to like check notifications after my watch or my phone beeps or vibrates to let me know something's there, they still don't appear quickly enough. And I'm kind of left with my wrist hanging in the air for a few, you know, two seconds too long. Particularly if you're in like meetings, it's much less sensitive to subtle wrist movements to check on things where I found you can just, you know, very subtly do this with the Apple Watch. Now, if you do lots of meetings, then you might feel a bit rude sat there just staring at your watch whilst waiting for you to notify that someone's actually just subscribed to your YouTube channel. Ideally, now this activation should be instantaneous, but alas, not on the Galaxy Watch 4. Okay, so number two on the list, and this seems to be very polarizing for many like, Apple versus Android debates that I've come across, but there is 100% a shutter lag issue on the S22 and pretty much Android in general, I found. Now I've mentioned this on my S22 Ultra, like six months later review too, but the number of times I've gone to take a photo with the S22 Plus only to tap the button and then wait anywhere from a split second to a number of seconds for it to actually snap the photo. It's a real shame as I actually, I really do like the cameras on this. I actually find myself preferring them over the iPhone's camera, like over processed images, but the reliability question over Android is seriously a thing. And it seems to be an issue that I see across pretty much all Android phones of all like shapes and sizes when comparing it side by side to the iPhone. Now, with that said, I would say that the phone has held up much better in this heat that we're going through right now. With the iPhone, I've experienced the screen just dimming far, far too often outside because of the heat, whereas the Samsung S22 Plus hasn't even once, which helps you when you're trying to snap photos because on the iPhone, you can't even see the screen because it's too dim. Love the cameras on the S22. I just don't like the shutter delay that comes with them. Which brings me to the number one reason about what I don't really like about the S22 Plus. And it's going to sound really, really stupid. And it's a very polarizing comment that I'm sure like, the Android crew are going to flame me for in the comments. But the S22 Plus isn't the S22 Ultra. And of course your reaction to that is gonna depend on whether you wanted a Note this year or whether you wanted what we had last year. You see last year in the S22 One Ultra, we had this same smaller form factor, but we got all of those extra like flagship features in the same like, size and shape format. This year, you're basically forced to buy the Galaxy Note in everything but name if you want those same features. Now I just don't use the S Pen. It's that like Marmite accessory of some people like love it and use it all the time. And some people like me that literally never take it out of the phone, but they still buy one anyway because they want like the 40 megapixel selfie camera, the 10 times telephoto and the bigger battery as well. And that really is quite annoying because I want exactly what we had last year, the S22 Ultra features, but in the S22 Plus form factor. So it's not really a complaint about the S22 Plus specifically, more just how Samsung have chosen to design and market their phones this year with their decision to basically axe the Note, but basically make the Note anyway. But the good news, following my last video, all about like how bad the performance was with the Exynos chipset inside our version of Samsung's like flagship phones this year, the good news is that these issues seem to be pretty much entirely gone now. Like with one exception, with that whole like swiping up to search thing, I still do find that slow at times, but I've actually fixed that issue by switching to Nova Launcher and adding that custom action to search when I swipe down, which is nuts when a third party product can make something work faster than Samsung itself can. So if you are delaying buying an S22 Plus, like I know many of you are because I see you in the comments, because of the performance issues that have been an issue at launch, I would say now is a very safe time to go and buy one. So a quick shout out to one password for sponsoring this video. And they've been able to do something amazing for those of you who have made it to this part of the video and given me a link that gets you 50% off either a personal or a family subscription to one password. So that means you can get what is, in my opinion, one of the best password managers available today for about I think it's like 30 bucks for a family of up to five people per year or 18 bucks for an individual subscription, which is just crazy affordable for a password manager. The launch of their new Android app is coming up very, very soon, which I'm using across like all of my Android devices and it works really, really well. So if you haven't already signed up or if you're currently using Chrome or Samsung Knox to store your passwords, consider checking out 1Password to let you bring your passwords across to other devices as well. Links will be down below to get that 50% off. And if you're an iPhone user who's looking to switch to Android because you're a bit you know, bored of the incremental updates that we're seeing year on year on the iPhone, then I would say either the S22 Plus, the S22 Ultra, or the Google Pixel 6 is worth picking up. And you can see that one over here. Or is the Nothing Phone a worthy competitor? Click here to find out and experience the hype. Cheers.